Hi everyone, hope you're doing well from wherever you're watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now, we all know that William Ruto's regime is unpopular, and uh, for those who have tried to defend this government, every time they look so much stupid, because then if you're looking on how to defend whatever the government is trying to do, there is little to defend about, because this is a government that has laid its foundation on the root of lies on everything they want to shift a blame and there is no way they want to be held responsible at any given point despite the fact that they collect taxes they run government they are borrowing but at any given point they don't want to be held responsible if you raise anything they shift a blame if you raise anything work in a regime Ayla Odinga, Handshake and all those then they have now gone back to the issue of giving promises campaign trail that has made a lot of Kenyans to now start hating William Ruto's regime. Because you can't be in a state house, then the, the end game you have is all about promises when you are in a position of influence and delivery. This regime is now being seen as anti-people regime. And because of that, they are now trying to come out with a narrative that I've seen Dennis to be now trying to share on his platform and is trying to create a, uh, uh, to, 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 to and in his tweet Dennis Itumbi is trying to label journalists as anti-government those uh, TV commentators and a TV station as people who have one agenda that has been sponsored by specific individuals to make sure that they are attacking the government and make it unpopular so it's a kind of saying that there is a group that is trying to incite Kenyans against the government. And this is what he's saying. Let me just read it. The Hasna National Intelligence Bureau, NHIB, has obtained information placing senior practicing journalists, TV commentators and editors in bi-weekly meeting to plan anti-government messaging. <laughs> The meeting has been on since December last year. When they read this, they will know themselves. The financier is obvious, as has always been suspected. Do we name them Oro? Sorry, do we name them? Our agents are debating and will arrive at a decision in 48 hours. That is Dennis Itumi for you. Anytime you see Dennis Itumi trying to come with this issue of NHIB, then you should just prepare to be fed on a propaganda. As simple as that. It was selling when he was in opposition and when they were looking for office, whether it was lies or not, to some extent people could buy into it. But you can't be in the power where you are controlling everything you have intelligence and you try to come out with a such kind of pretending to be leaking out information it is clear that you are creating a propaganda and there is something you are, you are trying to run away from and on this pipeline the question is what is this that itumbi is trying to run away from before we continue with the, with the discussion just a quick request for those who are watching and you have not subscribed please consider subscribing to our return to the I say thank you so much and again to all our viewers please give this video a thumbs up thank you so much and back to this discussion now the reality is that after as new launched the collection of signatures that alone is a threat to the current regime because it's like Kenyans who are just ready and if you check on social media people are asking how can you get those uh, papers to sign can it be on the on 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 our website so that we can download sign or sign online it's like many people want to sign it and this is a petition to remove someone from office but it's a popular position why because people are tired they have waited they have been promised but seemingly there's nothing like delivery it's all about promises so people cannot continue to, prom to, 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 to wait or uh, live on promises without delivery. Njaha ingoji kesho. Shida ingoji kesho. They need it now. 
There are things you can continue to promise, but the basic things will never wait. With those ones, you deliver or you are on your own. As simple as that. So the reality is that this regime is learning that there's no one with them. What TV commentators are doing on live interview is giving out information the way it is on the ground. When you are unpopular, you are unpopular. There's no any other way we can describe it. When people are against the regime, they are against it. But they have it. So what they should be looking for when people go for mass action is what is the problem? Because you are elected to solve problem, not to create problem, not to complain. So issue of complaining and creating problem is something that will make Kenyans to hate you. Because we are seeing a tomb who is now coming to complain. We are seeing a man who is bringing the issue of propaganda. And now he want to victimize journalists, TV station, the TV commentators, just because they are not with them. I'm asking a question. Should the journalist be reading on the same page with the government? The fourth state is the third eye in the society. It is the mirror of the society. So it is their duty also to hold a government responsible on their promises they give to the people. Why should the media favor the government? I don't see the reason. Let them do their work. They have a chance to go to the media also. They should be telling those who are also challenging the government with fact. But because they lack fact, that's why they will come with a propaganda like this one. It is only stupid people who can buy into propaganda as of now. Because there are questions that Kenyans want to know. Kenyans want to know why is it that Unga is going for 220 shillings or to 240? And the government should be answering this. Kenyans are not interested in the stories Itumbi is bringing. What Kenyans are interested in is why the price of fuel has gone high up to 195 shillings. Compare that to Uganda, compare that to Kenya. Remember, Uganda is a landlocked country. Why is it that in their country is cheap and they get it through Kenya? What Kenyans want to know is why is it that 2 kg packet of sugar is going for 420 shillings? So the issue is you come out with solution, not trying to label journalists as anti-government, then you victimize them. What Kenyans want to know is that why is it that the electricity tariff is going high? Now, one unit is going at 29 shillings. Why are you doubling taxes? If you can come out and answer these questions, then in that way, maybe Kenyans will think about it. This regime is unpopular because they have engaged in activity of overtaxing Kenyans. And what they're learning is that even those who voted for them, they have realized that they made a mistake. They're learning they made a mistake because seemingly the regime is doing totally opposite of what they promised. Mamboga was promised a lot. Boda Boda riders. Ruto hakuambia watu wa Boda Boda. Akikuwa president adaleta pikipiki za steamer. Alikuwa naunduza uhuru kwa nini beya mafuta iko ship in Uganda when Kenya, where Uganda now is passing their fuel, oil in Uyenda Kula, is expensive. Today, the same question is on him. Why is it that the fuel in Kenya is expensive? compared to Tanzania and the Uganda. Now they have, they have come with a system whereby now help is not to every student. Now it is selective. And when you come to the issue of selective, then it becomes the issue of those who have connections to get help. But help was for everyone who qualifies. Today it is selective. The question that it took me should be Answering here and the regime, because now he's seeming like he's speaking for the government and indeed he's doing so. 
is that why is it that we don't have medicine in our hospital today? Why is it that the health workers are protesting every day? They should be answering the question about the issue of delay of disbursement of money to fund primary and secondary education. Last week we saw principals sending students home for the longest half term. Half term in a is This time around it was more than seven days. The reason was that they did not have money to buy food to feed the students. So they had to go for a long half term. The reason is that they did not disburse money timely. All these are a question that is making this government unpopular and that's why media is bringing out the real situation on the ground and when they see this they get worried because they have no any plan to deliver. And once someone has no plan to deliver, he will engage in propaganda. The issue will be all about lies and uh, trying to defend themselves by shifting a blame. And that's exactly what this government is doing. Gashagwa is, is doing that. And Itumbi is the mastermind of this game also. That's the reality. So when the media get to the village and say that in this village people slept hungry, it's true. When they say that bandits have attacked this village, it is true. When they say that Unga is going for 220 shillings, it is true. When they say that Ruto promised to give one million job every year, and we have seen in this year, the people have lost close to one million jobs, it is true. You promise heaven, you deliver hell. So when the media say you delivered hell, it's become a problem. When they ask about what you promised, they play sound clips, and then they compare with what you are doing, it becomes a problem. So, whatever Itumbi is trying to portray here, it is the fear of being told the truth. And indeed, this regime is fear, is living in fear, because now everyone is against them. That's what I can say. I don't know your views, but let us meet in the comment section for coordination of this conversation. Otherwise, thank you and see you in our next video.